Hey, everybody. Welcome to this week's Q&A. Uh, this is Amy Satori, intuitive spiritual teacher. If you would like to ask a question next week on next week's uh, Q&A, then you would go to amysatori.com forward slash ask Amy. And for that matter, if you guys want to, um, if you've been watching my inspirational stories and you want to submit a story, you go to the same website, amysatori.com, and you click on share my story. And that'll give you all the criteria that I'm looking for um, in those stories. And if you feel like, yeah, it's a good fit for you, then go ahead and schedule yourself in my calendar. Okay, so just a quick reminder, um, when you guys submit questions, just remember your, your, it's one question, ask me one question for their $33. Um, so those of you who are new may not understand that. I try to explain these things on the, on the website, but sometimes it, it, you know, it's good to have the reminders, but so $33 per question. So make sure you phrase your question in a way that's, that can, uh, kind of the broader the question, the better, because I'll go into more detail. If you ask just a yes or no question, I'll still go into more detail for you as best I can. But, um, you know, try to try to phrase your questions so it encompasses all of your questions. If you have five questions about something, just ask a big general question. And that way you can get the most, the more, the more bang for your buck kind of thing. Um, OK, so also, if you guys ask a general question, which somebody happened to do in this week's Q&A, and we'll see that. And I think the first example um, if you ask a general question, I will be happy to answer that for free because our wonderful timestamper H is um, she'll she'll go through and she'll write down what that general question is. So as you guys are scrolling down the timestamps underneath the, the video, you can go, oh, that's something I've always wanted to know about. How do you listen to your higher self or how do you do this, that and the other thing? The other thing to remember as a good reminder is that um, every, all the energy that I put out in these readings for, for each person as they you know, as they place the order, I'm actually putting the intention out to help everybody on the planet that has that same issue. So I'm helping the entire collective. So by you answer, asking that question, you're not just asking it for yourself. You're asking it for like, you know, hundreds of thousands of people potentially. So you're helping everybody. So that's, what's really cool too. All right, so we're going to get to the questions. And this week and for the next two or three weeks or so, uh, they're going to be shorter than they usually are. I usually allow about 20 questions to be asked. Um, this week, we're cutting it to like 10 because um, I'm doing something right now. And so I just had to cut the time in half. So um, make sure you get your questions in by Saturday if you want to make sure that you make it in for next week. Okay, so 3986. Um, our dog Roger had a sudden acute condition the other day and the vet said we needed to act quick to reduce his suffering. Not only do we miss him dearly, but there is much guilt for not recognizing anything in advance. Aww. So what do you, what do our beloved pets do when they pass? So there's the general question that she's answering, um, on her behalf, but also for all of you watching. Um, so I'll feel into that first. And then she has a specific question after that. Okay. So um, what do our beloved pets do when they pass? Um, the cool thing about pets is they, they, they treat their lives like we should really. <laughs> they treat their lives like clothes, like just taking their clothing off. They're just, oh, okay. So I'm done with all the pain because I was getting tired of it anyway. And I'm going to jump into this other body, another dog, cat, horse, person, you know, it, they can turn into a person from what I've understood if they evolve, you know, sometimes they're made into a dog or a cat to be made to be more subservient in a way uh, so to serve also a higher purpose of compassion and empathy and all that. And even to do some like uh, learn a little bit of light work and stuff. Um, but so if they learn these lessons, they can graduate into a person, it, but it can go both directions depending on what they're wanting to experience in their life. Right. So they just go bloop, 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 bloop into body, all these different bodies. And they'll tell me um, when I communicate with them and they've passed away, sometimes they'll be like, I want to come right back. Let them know I'm going to come right back as soon as I can. And sometimes I can get a description of the animal that they're going to come into. And sometimes they're just like, the first animal that this person loves, you know, I'm going to jump in and kind of braid my soul with it, you know, so you'll have this animal start acting like your animal, like a little, you'll have some characteristics that are kind of like a little wink that, oh my gosh, he does that, that the old one used to do. That was really something crazy that you'd remember. So um, uh, they usually do go to a really good place, a really, really happy place. Some of them, um, 
some of them teach stuff, you know, that's more of a people thing. People go up and teach classes or teach, they have to learn lessons and they end up, you know, um, teaching other souls and all kinds of crazy stuff happens on the other side. But animals usually go and play for a while. They, they go into a meadow or some, some place that's ideal for them. If they loved it on your lap and, and you used to knit and you used to just sit in this, care, this chair and do your thing and your cat wanted to sit there on your lap all the time, then that's probably what the cat would be doing on the other side. So being that it's all a simulation in a hologram, they get to go to like a, um, you know, a favorable hologram. So um, they get to experience all these wonderful things over there. And then they decide whether they want to come back or not and when they want to come back or not. So a lot of them exit because they know that you're about to go through a major transition. And I feel like I'm saying this because of your animal did this. So first of all, you should know that your animals pre-designate when they're going to go. So don't feel bad about that. They probably urged the doctor to tell you that they needed to get put down. Or some, there's something around that area, like within weeks or a certain time frame. Um, and they already have a plan as to where they're going to come back. Sometimes when they're in their body, I have to reassure them that the death process is easy and comfortable. And if they're new to it, if they haven't been through a lot of bodies or whatever. Um, but yeah, so it feels like he, he took off because you're about to go through a major transition in your life. And sometimes they know that they would be more of a burden to you than helpful. So they bail. But it's not to be taken too personally or not to be taken, you know, we, we, we always uh, attach to our possessions, the people around us, the pets and all that. And we're like, it's my pet and I love my pet. But if you can think of it more as an, as an energy and a supportive energy, it's like it has to transform into something else to come back in your life in a different way. So a lot of times, even when we're able to let go of something, whether, you know, we should always be letting go of something in a sense of not clinging too hard, because when we let go, something new comes in that's even more beneficial for where we're at right now, you know? So at pretty much every time you have to level up in life, you're going to have to let something go in order for the, the fresh, new, wonderful thing to come in. So your question was, um, can you please try to connect with Roger and ask him if it's okay, how all of this went down? Because he felt really guilty about the timing. So I would say that's a definite yes, it's okay. He said, I chose to do this. He does have a little bit of a teacher vibe. He kind of sounds like if, if he'd be a person, he'd be the one that would just be like, you know, you should only use three drops of that. You know, you should only do that you know, once a day. That's all might be too much or, you know, like he'd be kind of a, uh, like a support role, but also kind of like teaching you new things and things like that. So it's really, he's got a cute vibe and I see him standing up on two feet, not four. So, and I see him like in a, as a cartoon character, kind of wagging his finger like this, one, you know, trying to like, and you'd be like, oh, okay, you're right. I should only did it. Maybe I shouldn't be having sugar anymore or something like that, you know? So he's really, he's got a cute vibe and a good sense of humor. And I feel like he does want to come back around, but there's something about the timing of it. You got to go through something first. So I feel like he wants to be up in heaven. You can call it um, up in this positive, great zone that he's in, um, which happens to be running around with a few dogs that are best friends. And the cats are there too. It looks like he gets along just fine with the cats. So maybe he was always good with cats. I don't know, but they're like running in a meadow, which is very common having fun. And it feels like at, it's, he has set some kind of a marker in the future, like out about three months or more, at least it's like, whatever you're about to go through, is going to last about three months. Um, so on the other side of that, he's like set some kind of a marker where once this is done, and they find a new animal that they fall in love with or whatever, I'm jumping in. So he's already got all that set. You don't even have to worry about it. It's all going to happen naturally. Um, And I just felt you going, oh, like, that's so cool. So, yeah, he's coming back. Um, Uh, He just wants to thank you. And he, he feels terrible that you feel so bad about it. He wants you to, he wants you to get some Reiki or some energy work done to get the guilt and, and like all of that off of you. He wants you to, so I'm going to do a clearing on you right now. Um, yeah. So take any kind of negativity. He doesn't, they, they don't like it when we use them as an excuse to be miserable. You know what I mean? So we're going to just take that off of you right now. And um, he said, he also wants to continue to bring you joy now from where he's at, which he can do that. You know, he can come down and kind of give you a little reminder that he's thinking of you and 
Um, you know, you might feel him putting his little head on your lap or, you know, something that he used to do and you'll go down to pet him and you'll be like, oh my gosh, he's not here anymore. But it's not to jar you into, oh, grief again. You know, it's, it's more like, oh, here he is reminding me that, that he loves me and he's looking out for me. Okay. Now, this is a reminder. This is for anybody who's lost a pet recently. Okay. And all of you are receiving a healing right now to drop any kind of guilt or shame or anything in just, you know, it's out of your hands. It was all part of the plan. And just let go. Okay. So thank you on behalf of everybody for asking that question. Um, okay. We'll go to the next question. 3990. Um, a man I friend zoned 11 years ago. I've stayed in touch with through the years, recently reconnected with me about a month and a half ago, and we began something romantic. It feels like he's pulled away though, but I feel he's still interested. What can be done to promote and facilitate a commitment between us? I can feel that he cares. So I'm going to do a true love. I'm going to do a true love spread for you. We're just going to take a look and see what might be going on. All right. What's he thinking and feeling about her now, God? What's he thinking and feeling about her now? What's he feeling and thinking about her now? Hmm. I almost feel like he's planning some kind of a secret or something. I saw him go. Shh. Okay. Ah, this is really interesting. Well, you have the sun card in, in the spread, so it makes everything more positive. Trying to overcome, having the courage to overcome some kind of a burden, having to do with an insecurity about, maybe he doesn't feel like he has enough money. Because you got the king of pentacles and the and the devil next to it. So it's like he might be insecure that he doesn't have enough money, I think. And trying to figure out a way to stop worrying and build some kind of solid foundation with you built on. It's it's almost like I feel like if I'm a good enough person and I have enough integrity, then I maybe I can make up for not having the money is what that feels like. And he's trying to come up with the worth, the self-worth to not see his worth as money, you know. And he's trying to see his love himself enough to have the value to want to heal that within himself, that conflict within him so that he doesn't get judged by you. I mean, I hope he didn't lie to you only because lies are really, once you've lied to somebody, it's really hard to get the rapport and the trust back. So I hope he hasn't done that, but he really, um, he's really trying to find the strength to heal things with you and get you back to a, where you guys once were kind of giddy and playful. Um, <laughs> that was a yes. <laughs> um, there also might be something about him being afraid that you're going to judge him about a baby with an ex. So it's possible maybe that he's been people pleasing. Maybe he knows that you don't want to have kids. So he's afraid to tell you that he's got a kid with someone else or something like that. That's a possibility. I'm not saying that's a for certain, but it's kind of showing up here. Um, <laughs> all right. So let's look at some masculine cards as well and see what these have to say. Oh, I miss you so much. My heartache. See, he totally cares. I don't know what I'd do without you in my life. Please don't go date someone else. I know I seem to be taking my time, but I'm evolving faster than you may know. You are seriously, literally the answer to my prayers, my dream girl. Say you'll say yes if I ask. I'm so nervous because I'm seriously planning to propose or elope. So get ready. Oh, now that's interesting. I've chosen to date someone else right now. So please respect that and give me the time and space um, to see what I truly want. 
So I want to, I want to see if there's anything in the, that indicates that here, um, a breakup, you know, there could be possibly, I just wonder if it's somebody who may be still be on the scene or it could say, are there any females here? I, I have the suspicion that if there is somebody involved, it's something that having to do with the mother of a child or something like that. And it's people pleasing. It's not that he loves the person at all. If there is it, even anybody, I don't see any third party cards though. Uh, that's kind of a third party card. I think he's afraid that I, I think that he, it's that worthiness thing that they all go through. So definitely check out my playlist, um, the divine masculine's ultimate test because, or, um, even watch the one, um, the different types of true love so that you can see the pattern that they kind of have. They get scared that you're going to break their heart. So they, so they end up dating somebody else. I'm going through somewhat of a financial crisis or restructuring right now. and might be changing jobs or careers. As soon as I feel stable again, I'll reach out. I don't care what others think of us. We're perfect for each other. And that's all that matters. I'm on my way to you right now. I'm so excited. I may lay low till I get there. So nobody can stop me. Oh my God. I can't wait to see you. So um, it could be just somebody who's still on the scene that still kind of has control over him. Could that he still lost to people, please. So it may not be somebody that he's actively in a relationship with. It just may be more like, he knows that he has to commit to that situation to wrap it up and clean it all up in order to be with you. So that may be what the pause is from. If I haven't said it yet or in a while, I love you. So yeah, you guys are on the same page. I would just say, to, should she just give him some time and just, okay, should she contact him? I feel like just leave him alone. And once he works through whatever he's working through, then he'll come to you. I get a yes with that. So don't even worry about it. Um, just know that he loves you and he's going through what he's got to go through. And he'll show up really solid and grounded when he does. And he definitely wants to be back. Um, so just take care of yourself. There is a video called Stepping Into Your Power that you could check out also in that same True Love playlist that talks about how as the divine feminine, you need to really get in your power, care for yourself, get over any kind of abandonment issues or anything like that going on um, while you're kind of waiting. It's not waiting, really. It's you coming into your power and getting over your own insecurities and suffering, self-suffering. Um, but, you know, so that you can get in your power and so this other person can come through. And remember that he's also energetically connected to you. So the more that you grow and become more self-aware, the more he will too. Okay. 39.93. Hello, my first question is about a mystery problem down there that I've been having for over a year. I thought that it was a bacterial problem, but no doctor can tell me what's wrong. I'm hoping you might have some insight. I just saw a worm. I just saw, yeah, I just saw like, a, a, like it could be a parasite problem. Yes, I just got a yes. I don't know what the heck that means, uh, but I just got that... Um, Oxygen, what is that called? The, um, the da, 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 ozonated olive oil. Ozonated olive oil. If you insert that in the area for a, about seven days, you may take care of the problem. But I would also make sure or go through and do some kind of a really good parasite cleanse. Um, and I mean, I guess that's what I've never seen yeast in a, you know, in a microscope, maybe they look like parasites. No, no, they're going, no, no, it's a, it's a parasite issue. So, um, um, they're also showing that it needs more light. Um, obviously you can't get it more light, but like energetic light. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> like, uh, any kind of like Reiki or Qigong or any kind of, any kind of energy healing you can do in that area on a regular basis. Uh, like this is one good reason the, why Qigong is good to do on a regular basis is because it flushes you with light all the time. It just floods you like a waterfall and flushes any negative or stuck energy out of you. Um, yeah. 
Hala shen she la kirin sa se he na ai ke la. Se se he pum pum ma ana. Shen she la. He he la sa se. He ke en ta ta yi sa. Um, something about a, oh, uh, what do you guys mean? Do you have maybe a pyramid that you haven't put up that you've been meaning to put up? You know what I mean? Like those, uh, those ones that you sit under in your home. For some reason, I feel like you're, you're being encouraged to get that pyramid set up. And if you don't, you've been thinking of getting one. This is thumbs up from the universe. Like you need to get one. Um, I don't, necessarily know where to get them. I mean, I used to know, and I don't, I could probably dig it up somewhere, but just look online for home, for pyramids that go in your home. Some of them are made out of PVC pipe or copper or something like that. But um, yeah. Um, is there any kind of other taunt, taunt, tantric healing? Sacred sexuality, something about embracing sacred sexuality too, like making the act um, a sacred thing. How does she do this? How does she do this? Because I don't know if you have a partner or not, but obviously if you have a partner, Tantra would be a good thing to practice or something, but I'm not taking, how does she treat it sacred? How does she treat that act as sacred? Um, look at ver- choosing to look at it differently than you have been not a means for an end for, as an orgasm, but like just more of a sacred act to connect with something, you know, to look, just look at it differently from a different perspective that feels sacred to you. Um, m- more holy, more spiritual, more, um, I don't, you know, you'll know what I mean. Um, make it a sacred act. Okay. The, what I mean by that is sexuality. Like, you know, when you do something sexual, <laughs> kind of keep a PG 13 as much as possible. I don't even know if I could use the S word, but whatever. Um, so just try to keep it, um, you know, j- j- look at it differently, heal it, heal, heal your issues around it. <laughs> uh, you could do like, thank you God for my misery. Thank you God that I have this issue there. And write down all the benefits and advantages as to why that's a really good thing. That that what is that teaching you right now? And and write it down. It's important that you write it down. You'll get the most benefit out of it. So that's also here on YouTube if you want to look that up. Your second question is about cold sores. I have the worst one right now that's lasting over a month. I tried to do some emotional release work on it, but I I get anger. It hasn't helped clearing it up. Again, any insight would be wonderful. Thank you. Um, Shishi, anger. They're like, yeah, anger, 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 anger. So there must be something that you're totally pushing down and totally suppressing. And they're just like, um, they're wanting to shake you almost. It's like they're they're a little bit frustrated that you're you're either not seeing or not addressing it, or you're just not screaming like you need to. Like you must have it so deeply ingrained that, you know, that you'll be like, oh, no, I don't really don't need to tend to that. It's OK. I'm not really all that upset. You know, so if there's anything in life that you're doing that about where you're just kind of trying to oh do, 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 kind of pat it down and make it all nicey fluffy, um, take a good look at that. And I, I would say even that same the same exercise. Thank you, God, for my misery could be really good for anything in your life. And you'll have to admit the truth to yourself about how you really feel about these things. You'll have to write down whatever that is that you feel like is unfair or unjust, or it's just not right. Or you feel like a victim in any way at all, even if you're not really a victim and you ultimately know that, you know, we tend to put these, um, you know, kind of like one way of judging ourselves is we try to minimize our own feelings. You know what I mean? So it's really, if we really want to get uh, authentic with ourselves and real with ourselves during this time, which we all are trying to do, you've got to admit when you feel things, you know, that really actually quite pisses me off. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that really gets to me when that happens or something. And then it's like, okay, maybe what's the best, most loving way that I could handle it, but not in a judgmental way, like you're putting yourself down, but what is the most productive way to, to deal with this or whatever, or just do it on paper, you know, with that exercise and you'll feel much, much better. They just said, yes. Um, but they're wanting you to focus focus on the anger there's thunder going on in the background i'm not sure if you guys can hear it but 
Okay, Shoshana Papama on. Oh, they're saying that it makes you react prickly sometimes. Um, so that might be a good indicator. Spirit will show you. Like if you get agitated or triggered and you're just like snippets, like snippety about something, that's a good indicator that you're kind of pushing down some anger or something like that. So just pay pay attention to those moments when you when you kind of snap at somebody or you get impatient or you get, you know, if you react like that, ponder for a moment. What, what is it that I'm upset about right now? Or what is it that I'm upset that I'm pushing down? All right. Um just a moment. Okay. Um, Shishina Taike and Pompai Natai. And you probably know what this, what, you know, while well, they're saying you don't necessarily know what some of it is, but it could be related. It could be related to like the two issues could be related. Okay. So, uh, 3997. Hey, Amy, I recently asked you a question about my purpose and guidance as I feel stuck. You gave me a wonderful response that I resonated with saying I would move somewhere tropical and I would be leading people through nature while living near a beach. Cool. Also saying I would be living a life of living off the land. Awesome. This was very helpful. However, you also stated that I will be taken through it step by step. As of right now, I don't have a job and I need to get one, but I don't know what to do at this point. Okay. So what to do right now? Um, I feel that you need to be looking online. Um, I'm also feeling that there could be like a website developing more webs, maybe even a few websites developing for companies that don't make you get the poison in you. Um, I feel like you, um, you're going to be like, I don't know, this is kind of, they're saying that you're like bigger than the job. So maybe you're going to be overqualified. Or maybe you just have so much energy that you bring to the table. Like they're expecting you to be some kind of like meek, quiet person coming in and you're going to be like all, you know, um, but you're going to be a little bit over the top for what they're looking for somehow. But um, I feel like it'll make ends meet for sure. It'll get you through this next little bit. However, um, in every little job or experience that we go through um, is going to give us a little bit uh, a little bit here, a little bit there to kind of gather as we go along. And so you'll definitely be using the experience of whatever this is. And they're not giving me any kind of specific, they don't, they're not wanting you to know any specifics right now. I don't know why, but they're, but I, that's all I'm getting for that. They're, it's like, they're not even giving me like a job title or where it's going to be or location or like, they're like none of that. But the best thing that you can possibly do to line up with this is to ask yourself, what is it that I'm, that I'm looking for? And how do I want to feel at this job? And like, what, what kind of pay do I want? And then you thank God that it's already happened. So you say, uh, thank you God so much that I have a, um, that I have a job that gives me more than I was ever expecting. And that I just love it so much. And that it's just been one of the most incredible experiences and that it totally fits into my schedule. And they don't make me take the poison and they don't, you know, they, they, they really appreciate me so much. And they're so like every, every time I go into work, I just feel so welcomed and, you know, just list all the things that you would like it to be like, and thank God as if it's already, you've already had the job for a few months and that you're just loving it. And, and just be so relieved that you found this incredible job. That's so perfect for you. That provides for all your needs and all that kind of stuff. Um, it may have something to do with outdoor equipment, like REI or, you know, one of those kinds of places it's possible. Um, but they want you to look online and they also want you to kind of don't be too picky. Don't be too stringent. In other words, like it may be a position that you're not used to doing that. You're going to have to like, learn how to do those things. Um, it's like, just consider when you see certain jobs, Hmm, I wonder if I could do that. Or I wonder if, even though I've never been in that field, I wonder if that would be something I could plug into and learn how to do and do really well. 
So it feels like there's an element of you having to kind of look outside the box a little bit and kind of stretch yourself outside your comfort zone. Um, and you, and like I said, you might be overqualified, but the most important thing in looking for a job right now is that it lines up with something you really enjoy and that you be in a state of joy and happiness going there. I mean, I worked at Home Depot for a while and you would never suspect that or ever think that I would do something like that, but I love Home Depot. I have uh, every time I go in there, my heart soars and I just love that place. And I wanted to learn more about, um, you know, all the different things that you can learn about fixing a home or fixing things and stuff. So I thought it was perfect and it ended up being a really wonderful experience. So, um, and it was a stepping stone to other things happening. So just follow, follow what, what, what would be fun for you? Like if you were a court, you know, in the corporate world, for example, and you decide to go be a barista, a coffee barista or something that you may be like, well, that is a really that, you know, I'm lowering myself to do that, but don't, you know, that's shouldn't be a factor right now. Because if you go, if you go become the barista, you might just meet, you know, a mega billionaire who has some kind of incredible project. And just because he likes your personality, he's like, I could use your creativity on my team. And then you're making double or triple what you were before. So nothing about money right now. Just know that your needs are going to be met that way and just go with what makes you happy, period. That's it. So just keep following that. Um, and, and keep an open mind and think positively in terms of your job. Don't, don't think in, a, in terms of lack, like, oh, I have to, like, don't put pressure on yourself. Just get something that brings you joy. And then you'll, you'll bring in more things that bring you joy and more things that bring you joy. So you're, you're, you're being led step by step. Again, they're giving you the same message, but definitely use some affirmations to help you go that direction too. Okay. Um. <laughs> 3998. Will my oldest son find a job very soon? She she hit by okay. I get a yes. Um, he's gonna feel a little intimidated, like he can't do it. Um, but he needs to, to come out of his shell a little bit. I feel like a hermit energy with him, like he's really kind of holding back. Uh, maybe he's a, I, it almost feels like he's a closet gamer or somebody who hides that he's gaming in these, but he's, he's like wanting to go into the corporate world. Or he's wanting to go do something that's more like official or something like getting hired to do some kind of software or something or other. But he, it feels like he feels a little bit intimidated putting on different clothes and, and like having to dress up for work or something like that. But I would definitely encourage him to believe in himself. I feel so much resistance. Like he might tell you that he prefers, like, I hate dressing like that, those stuffy people. So he might put them down, but in actuality, it's his actual insecurity of him not being good enough when he goes there. So just so you know, um, as his mom or whatever, like, just give him a little boost of confidence. Oh, I think you'd be perfect in a place like that. I think you'd be great if you dressed up every day. It might even make you feel good about yourself. Who knows what would happen? You da, 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 da. Like try, try to help. Yeah, that feels like that really helps if you say that. Try to just boost his self-esteem up and help him feel really good about it and some positive aspects that he could get out of it. And um, yeah. Um, 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 she, she, hey, no, okay. So, 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 so. So yeah, something is coming. It feels like in about maybe eight weeks ish. So within the next couple of months, um, but he's definitely going to need a little bit of a push, a push out out there. I don't know if he's staying at your place or something. Feels like he needs to. He needs a little nudging out of the nest a bit. So um, yeah, so you can be that little nudge for him. Okay, so um, <laughs> second question. Will we be okay money wise? Okay. Um, yes, eventually. It's not like right right away, but you build up to it. It almost feels like I don't know, because you said you said we. It, would that be like you and your husband, or is your son helping you financially? Um, I'm gonna assume that's you and your husband. Um, she, she, hey, not take I, I, I'm seeing eventually it's not going to be an overnight thing. Um, but like, oh gosh, that kind of feels like about five weeks out, almost like, oh, it's something I even feel like there could be one of your credit cards that get paid off. 
one of your credit cards could get paid off and then it gets wiped out. Cause I, I felt like in about five weeks, um, you're going to have a credit card paid off. I thought it was because you were going to pay it off and then things would get like level out a little bit better. But then I got to feeling like there's actually, um, another, there's another, um, there, there was another aspect of it. And so I, I think it's going to get paid off. I get a yes again. Is our credit card going to get paid off or something like that? Oh, damn. Yes. Queen of swords. That's a definite yes. So oh, look at that. You're going to come into some money. King of pentacles. So somebody who's like on top of the world and has all the money in the world and can do anything he wants with it with total confidence. So you're coming into a prosperous time. So just hold, you know, just a few, just a few weeks and things could really shift for you. Okay. Three, nine, nine, nine. Okay. Hi, Amy. This is a difficult one as I, as I have to give you a little history. I'm an older woman, but have had some constant dreams lately. You see, I had a son 47 years ago out of wedlock. I'm a nurse and his dad is a doctor. This man was only 30 when I had my son. I knew that this doctor um, had his life ahead of him and out of his heart and out of my heart, I told him the child was not his as I didn't want to ruin his future. Later, I asked him to get tested to confirm that it was that it was his, but he didn't want to do it. And now he's got some now he's got some sons of his own. So um, many times he did try to contact me through other people. And now the dreams come and he tried to ask for forgiveness in the dream. Wow. I have not thought of him for years. My question is, is there any significant meaning to these dreams? If so, is spirit encouraging me to take any kind of an action? I'm at a loss. I believe he knows this child is definitely his and feels some remorse. Okay. Uh, yeah, it, it, it bothers him. I think, um, I don't know if you're able to contact him or not. Okay, so they said it doesn't matter. Um, if you can contact him in an email, I would explain all of this to him. I would tell him, just so you know, I never wanted anything from you. That's not, it wasn't going to be my purpose in, in trying to find out if you were the father. I just wanted to give, to offer my son some peace of mind as to who his father was. Um, and I've been having some dreams about you lately. And it, you're, you've been asking me forgiveness. So I just wonder if there's a part of you that wants to somehow make amends or wants to somehow um, wrap this up or come to some kind of conclusion and maybe get tested or anything like that on the, on the chance that possibly this is kind of weighing on you or something. I would be more than happy to go through this process with you so that we can confirm or deny um, you know, your connection to him. I know that it would mean the world to him and to me to put this behind us. And I wouldn't want anything from you, you know, something like that. And if you can't send it to him, it might just be good for you to pour your heart out in a letter to him so that you can feel peace. Cause it could be also that spirit is trying to help you to make peace with the issue so that you can put it to rest. Maybe you can do the, the thank you God for my misery exercise. That would be really good too. Um, yeah, I think, I think you're right. I think it is really plaguing him. Um, he did you wrong. I just heard he did. He knows he did you wrong. Has he, no, he hasn't told his sons that they might possibly have a brother. So I think that's really bothering him too. Um, we could have an addition to the family. He's not sure how he would explain that either. So I think, feel like he's just conflicted. So if you maybe just um, some kind of a, a friendly email, some something that's like we don't we wouldn't want to intrude on your life. You, we wouldn't even have to tell your sons if if you're not comfortable or whatever. But if there's anything that I can do to to you know to offer, I don't you know resolution on this, then please let me know. Sasana tuchim home on. Um, okay. So I just, I feel like, um, 
Yeah. And then, and then be prepared to not take it personally if he doesn't write you back, you know, just put it out there. And I think that in itself will make him feel better. And then he's going to take action or he's not going to take action, but he'll get off the fence. And then you can put, if you do the thank you God for my misery exercise here on YouTube, um, it's on my channel. <laughs> it's put an Amy Satori in the word misery. It'll come up. Um, do that exercise on all the different aspects of that whole thing. Um, thank you, God, that my son has no idea who his father is, would be one good one. Um, thank you, God, that his father wants nothing to do with, with identifying whether he's the father. Uh, thank you, God, that he's never been there for us. Thank you, God, you know, come up with all the different aspects of that situation that you uh, that you feel like are upsetting for you, and then write down all the benefits and advantages as to why that's perfect, actually. Um, it'll help you come to terms with it. Okay, so I hope that helps. Um, I just felt like grabbing a couple of cards. <laughs> Let yourself sparkle and shine. You are guided to be bold and show your bigger than life self to the world. So maybe that's just a little side note for you. Oh, they said hermit with you too. Like they want you to come out and shine your light in this world. Huh, that's funny. It's like you, it's like um, in a way, feels like you might have submitted submitted this question, but but you also have other issues and you decided to address this one. But I feel like certain aspects of your dream were also encouraging you to be proud of yourself and to to be to go out. Maybe there's an aspect of your life where you're really thinking that you want to get out of the shadows and start getting more into the limelight or maybe talk to more people and stop being just totally like like a hermit. Um, so however that rings a bell for you passion and purpose they're calling you into your passion and purpose right now your enthusiasm gives you ener gives you energy and motivation to work on a meaningful project that's dear to your heart there you go so maybe it's having to do with this whatever you're maybe you're being they're encouraging you to get out of the shadows in order to step into the light to work on your passion project so um unnecessary worries <laughs> You're holding your back yourself back due to unnecessary worries. So there, that's just a little wink from the universe trying to let you know this is it's time for you to get out there and shine. And your son. And your son. Whether he knows his father or not, he doesn't need to. He can get out there and shine and be proud of himself. Okay. Uh 4002. And the last one. Okay. Hi, Amy. About a month or so ago, I started waking up with swollen fingers. Once I got them moving, they seemed to be okay. Initially, I thought it was from working in the yard or whatever, but it has continued and now I'm having numbness and pain. Can you please do a healing on this for me? Yeah. There's been, I think there is a lot of, uh, there's hand, there's hand, hand and joint energy right now going on. Uh, you may want to read there, uh, watch the, well, maybe read, but watch the recent video that I did on joints. Um, that was like a week or two ago. I think you may want to look at that. Cause I think you're, you're coming into that energy right now, but yeah, they're working on, um, what is it? Hands, hands and feet right now, hands, feet, ankles, uh, joints, wrists, um, something, something about like Ascension symptoms. So uh, bear with it. Um, if you have like a, you know, a machine like I do, the anti-aging bed machine, you could use this, you know, and put this around your hands, rub it on your hands. Go to um, antiagingbed.com forward slash discount forward slash Amy Satori. Um, and then you could be, I didn't have that hooked up. That's funny. Oh yeah, I did. I guess it just stopped after 45 minutes <laughs> anyway. Um, so yeah, just use that on your hands on a regular basis, um, to stimulate, to stimulate, um, is there any kind of a message that you want to give her about this swelling? She, she hit pun, huh? Something about, um, you sometimes don't ask for help when you need to. And they're encouraging you to go ahead and lean on others and ask for support if you need it, because it kind of feels like you're buckling under the pressure of doing it all yourself. Your hands are like holding the weight of the world 
and you're just like, I can hold it up by myself. I can do it by myself. And it, ne- it feels like you need to be like, okay, come on over here and spot me, please. <laughs> you know, come up under here and offer a couple of other hands, you know, together we can hold the world up. But by myself, it's like my hands are, are getting crippled from holding it up. So um, try to be more open to asking for help and, and uh, letting people know about your problems, not in a victim type of way, but being able to say, I could, you know, it's, it's, if you're ever going to say anything about your problems, it's good to be able to also let people know how they can support you. So don't just complain, you know, but say, you could say, this is an issue that I'm having right now. And I would sure love it if you could this, that, or the other thing. So that people know, you know, so many, especially women who get with these guys who are just like, well, he should know what I need to know, or he should know what I need, or he should, but he should be able to just read my mind. And, and it's just like, if that's not fair in any relationship, you have to be able to be clear about what it is you want. So get clear within yourself first, how could somebody come in and support me with this issue? And then you go tell them I have this issue. So when I have this issue, it would it mean a lot to me if you could call me or if you could, if I could just cry to you and you could just listen or, you know, whatever. Um, because nobody, I got, I just saw this and I think it was my Instagram recently. It said something to the effect of like, don't ever expect somebody to be able to, Oh, you don't, you learn how to love somebody. There's not just somebody who's just like going to be made for you and they just know all the right things to say. That does happen to an extent, but you have to um, nurture that along. So many people break up prematurely because they expect way too much of their person. They expect them to be like this perfect person. And that's just impossible. We all have an ego. We all get triggered. We all, you know, have things. So we have to be patient and we have to try to um, be, do, get clear within ourselves first and then communicate clearly to the other person and just make a kind request. They just said, make a kind request. So going forward, so many of us are, are are going to be navigating all kinds of different relationships that we have with all kinds of different people in our world. Cause we're, we're, we're working on coming together and harmonizing and forming communities and all kinds of things. So we have to be sensitive to each other and give each other the benefit of the doubt and offer up grace and all that kind of stuff. So uh, it just feels like you need to ask for some support. And then I see your hands like going back to normal once you, once you do that, just like having to be on your feet all day, like um, get a, get a job where you can sit half the time and stand half the time or to support yourself and to love yourself enough to do that or get more comfy shoes. But it feels like an adjustment needs to happen instead of you just taking the, all the weight on yourself. Um, so I'm going to just do a blessing for you just to offer up maybe some insights and some, um, epiphanies that can help you realize how better you can support yourself through this. Oh, something about. I see you like, was this in a past life? Well, I, for some odd reason, I see you slapping something, slapping something or somebody, slapping somebody, slapping somebody. What did that have to do? Okay. Oh, uh, huh? Status or something like that. Something having to do with status going outside of like, you know how there used to be like uh, kings and queens, they couldn't talk to certain people or certain people of ethnicity can't talk to people who are this or that or, you know, the class, different classes and stuff like that. It feels like you made some kind of, you got supported by some other, I don't know, if there was some kind of a mixing or mingling of classes or races or something where, uh, yeah, it, whatever the sensitivity is that you have to something like that, feel into that yourself and see um, where you have a tendency to kind of pull back because out of a fear of maybe getting slapped. Um, it makes me think of like a, like a, even a, a men's construction place 
uh, he asks a woman for help or something. She gets offended and slaps him, for example, because it's a male dominated place. And, you know, something, something to that effect. If you have an area of your life where you're not reaching out to get help because you're afraid that you're going to get slapped for it or taken the wrong way or something like that, then that's what you need to take a look at and, and feel into further to see like how you can drop that whole story and just drop any kind of um, any kind of rankings or hierarchies or, or differences like that. Um, is that it? Okay, so we're going to do the general blessing. Blessing. <laughs> it's so hard to get these, these terms, these new terms down. Um, okay, so just take a deep breath and relax. Drop your shoulders. <sighs> okay, my. Okay, so this is going to within your own free will and everybody involved. And as long as it's for the good of everybody involved, we're going to amplify whatever intention you're putting out right now. Hashe not a decane. She she hela natain. Say say hela ishinke. You pay him on. Ha la ho pump haba anateke. Ha ha la shinchena. Ha po ho ha an. Ha la kirina tahi he eh. Ha pum po chichin tata isan. Ha la he ke lady nai. He pe o a chin sasi hiki inatai. All right, you guys have a beautiful week. And if you want to uh, submit a question for next week, remember, just go to amysatori.com forward slash ask Amy, and you can read everything there and you can find out when your video will come out. I mean, please take the time to read through it all. Don't be in a rush because <laughs> it tells you everything you need to know right on that page. Have a beautiful week and I will talk to you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.